going on, YouTube? This is Her Collects Comics. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. I'm uh, going to show off some things that came in recently. going to do a quick haul video, if you will. And um, Silver Age book came back that I got uh, today. Uh, read it as well. Enjoyed it very much. going to show that off. Also, a beautiful Bronze Age book. And then uh, two other key Bronze Age books that I got pressed and graded. So, without further ado, let's get started here. I don't want to take too much of your time. First book, uh, the, the eBay seller that I got it from also was kind enough to throw in a, a, free, a freebie. What if the Fantastic Four had not gained their superpowers? Issue number 36. So it's always nice when you get a, a free issue. And that came with this. Silver Age Avengers number 23. This features uh, the first Silver Age Marvel artwork by John Romita. And uh, this cover here is by Jack Kirby and John Romita. And then the inside artwork is also by uh, John Romita, story by Stan Lee. And it's a great story. Basically, Captain America leaves the Avengers. Uh, seems like this is something that happens once or twice throughout his uh, run with them. And I guess there's some internal squabbling going on. He leaves, and the story starts off with Hawkeye, uh, you know, Quicksilver, and uh, Scarlet Witch basically arguing as to who was right, who was wrong, and, you know, who said what, who, you know, as a result, get Cap to angry enough to leave. So um, there's also an interesting exchange here where, you know, uh, Wanda seems to be, uh, has a little crush on Captain America. She says uh, here, how I miss the sight of him working out in our private gymnasium. So confident, so handsome. To me, he was every inch an Avenger. So I thought that that was an interesting exchange. This is, I guess, before she has her little thing with the vision. She's got the hots for uh, Steve Rogers. You know, so it ends up being where Steve goes to find other work and to build a life again with, you know, now that he's not with the Avengers no more. And he ends up seeking out uh, work as a sparring partner for a heavyweight champion. It's a cool issue, too, because you see Cap in the ring with the headgear and everything like that, you know, putting in work with, uh, with the champ. And uh, in the process of doing that, Kane the Conqueror, you know, sees, uh, seems like has devices in place where he's able to spy on the Avengers mansion, sees that, you know, there's vulnerability now that the captain of the team has left. And it's also a cool issue because you, you really do see how instrumental uh, Captain America is to the Avengers, the morale of the other members of the team and stuff like that well, as a result of his leadership. So Kang ends up, you know, capturing these guys. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, Iron Man and the rest of the gang are, are not around. You know, but it's a cool issue because Captain America ends up, you know, while sparring, hearing uh, one of the guys at the gym playing a new, the news in the background. And he sees that, you know, he hears that his friends are in trouble and that there seems to be some shady business afoot. And he ends up leaving uh, the boxing ring to, you know, basically go help his crew. And uh, he ends up coming onto the scene and helping them fight Kane the Conqueror. But uh, the story ends, ends unfortunately. Now i got to get issue 24 to see what happens next. But this is my oldest uh, Silver Age book to date, 1965. I'd say it's probably around 8.5. There are some dings and deads that don't break color, which I think could easily be pressed out and possibly improve the grade and I'll probably do that at some point uh, next book here is a Bronze Age book as I've said in some other videos when it comes to like Supernatural I've always enjoyed reading things that were werewolf related I recently just uh, read these uh, two issues of Marvel premiere which I talked about in another video that featured uh, J. Jonah Jameson's son the man wolf and um, kind of nice uh, origin uh, background to how he gets his powers in those stories so if you like that kind of stuff check it out but I've always wanted to get into Werewolf by Night. I didn't really know where to start. I know some of the older issues are expensive to come by, and I wasn't going to collect the first Marvel, uh, the first two Marvel spotlights of him, and then his own run. So there's too many issues to hunt down. Then I thought about the Marvel Essential. Those are always great, but they're all in black and white, and I kind of wanted this in color. So I, I popped for a, a Marvel Omnibus, which basically has everything that Werewolf by Night has ever been in, and that's uh, in the mail, and I look forward to reading it. But some of these covers from the Bronze Age, they had beautiful, bright, bold colors, and there were a number of Werewolf by Nights, like issue four and marvel spotlight number two where the issues have beautiful bright red colors in it. and issue 20 is one of those werewolf by night this is an absolutely awesome cover here features a uh, cover by gil kane and uh you know the detail is fantastic you see all the hair on the werewolf by night and then him pulling the jail bars completely off the wall but i absolutely love this issue and um, there are a few others that i like to pick up 
you know, that were a part of the series that are just great, but I'll get them in time, and I look forward to reading the Omnibus when it comes to over a thousand pages, so it's going to take me a little bit, but I definitely want to get through it because, um, you know, I've read good things about it. It was a popular character in the 70s, and again, I kind of have always liked, uh, you know, werewolves when it comes to the supernatural. You know, so the next two books here I'm going to show off is, uh, you know, books I ended up, you know, getting pressed and, and graded. Uh, there were two issues I picked up, you know, uh, about a year ago at two different times. And, um, you know, here they are. Conan the Barbarian, number one, issue from 1970, written by the great Roy Thomas, who was instrumental in Marvel getting the rights to be, you know, be able to, to do these uh, stories, the rights to Robert E. Howard's uh, Conan. And then another one, Conan, number one. From 1970, both of these have white pages. Both of them came back 9.0. And, uh, you know, at the time when I was meeting the presser at the New York Comic Con, and I showed him these books and we talked about them, both of us seemed to be in agreement that one of them would probably come back over 9.0, but for whatever reason, they didn't. I have the greater notes on them. One of them has us, you know, there are some slight dings and, you know, uh, spine cracks that were color is broken and uh, prevented them from getting a higher grade than 9.0. But still, for a book from 1970, I'm content with the grades. I'm glad that they did not come in lower than 9.0, but uh, definitely very happy to have these books in my collection. I've always liked Conan. I read many of the Conan stories in Treasury format. I have all four volumes, and, uh, you know, personally, I think that they're much better on those larger, uh, you know, those larger pages. So that's my video, guys. Happy to have these two key books back, you know, uh, graded and in my collection. I hope that you guys uh, like this video. Please subscribe, and uh, I'll be back again at some point in the near future. I'll catch you guys down the line. Thanks.